Hi, I'm Lisa, and for those of you who are new to our channel, we welcome you, and for those who are coming back, we welcome you back. Today, I am going to show you how to make three delicious and easy homemade snacks. These are low sugar, and they're very, very nutrient dense, and you won't believe how simple they are to make. First up, we've got this delicious homemade granola. It took me a really long time, but to finally make homemade granola. It's something that I've been wanting to make forever. Now that I know how easy it is, I can honestly say I will never buy store-bought granola again. It's so good, it's so versatile. You can use it on yogurt, you can use it on desserts, you can use it as cereal or just to snack on. Next up, we've got this, this dark chocolate and peanut butter date bark. It's so delicious, so easy, and it tastes like a candy bar. You are not gonna believe how easy this is to make. And my entire family who says that they don't like dates absolutely loved this. Last but not least, we are going to make some homemade Greek yogurt blueberry lemon bark. This is delicious, it is refreshing, and you're gonna love it. The first thing that I'm going to do to make this homemade granola, I'm gonna preheat the oven and get it on 250. You want to get yourself a big bowl like this to mix all the ingredients. And so we've got our chopped nuts. I'm going to put those right into the bowl. This is probably about just shy of two cups, I'd say. This is very forgiving, so you can add more, you can add less, you can kind of do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever mix of nuts that you want. I've got some almonds, pistachios, pecans. What do you say, pecan or pecan? I say pecan. And then I'm going to add my oats. If you've seen my Costco videos, you know I'm a huge fan of this big bag of oats that you can get at Costco. It is Farmers in the Know sprouted rolled oats. It's a great price for this big, huge bag. So I'm gonna do about four cups of oats. We made this last week and it was a hit. And I'm just gonna get my spatula and mix it together. Okay. Next, I'm gonna do a pumpkin pie spice. So I'm gonna do probably about two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice in here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it that in. I'm going to add in about a third of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And for my sweetener, I'm using maple syrup. Last time I made this, it was perfect for me, but Charlie likes it a little sweeter, so I'm adding a little bit more sweetener to this. So I'm going to do about a half a cup this time of pure maple syrup. And I'm just gonna stir this around so I can make sure everything gets nice and coated. As I said, this is very forgiving. You can add less oats, you can add more nuts, you can do whatever you want to do. All right, so I've got that nice and coated. I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons of vanilla. I really love cinnamon vanilla granola, and I am using pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie spice. So there's gonna be some cinnamon, some nutmeg, some allspice, and I added this vanilla in here. It smells really good. I've got my big baking tray here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to line it with a piece of parchment paper. And now I'm just going to spread my mixture. all over this pan. And I'm gonna try to get it as even of a layer as I can. 
but it's also okay if it kind of clumps together because that's when you get those clumps of granola. When I made this last time, it, it wasn't as much of a clumpy granola. It was a much more of a, a loose granola because I didn't use as much maple syrup. So it was really great for cereal, but I'm trying to do more of a snack granola this time. So I'm wanting it to clump together a little bit more. I just realized I forgot to add my pumpkin seeds. So I can still do that. It's okay. So hopefully this works out. <laughs> So I'm just gonna take my pumpkin seeds and I'm just gonna sprinkle them right on top. And then I'm just gonna mix them in. Just to make sure that they get coated. I think because I did just add those, I am going to add just a little bit more maple syrup to make sure that they get coated. And a little bit more olive oil. See, if you make a mistake in the kitchen, there's always a way to fix it. So don't panic. I used to think, oh my goodness, I messed it up. I have to throw out the whole recipe. That's not the case. Usually you can fix anything. So this is my fix. As long as they're coated, it should be fine. So it's just gonna take me a little bit longer to spread it out, but that's okay. Okay, so our giant pan of homemade granola is going to go into the oven, which we have preheated to 250, and it's gonna go in here for about an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so it is time to get our granola out of the oven. And it looks great. So now I just wanna let it cool, and then I can put it into the containers that I want to put it in for storage because I want to take some to work and I want to leave some here to snack on. This granola has now completely cooled. It's really good. I just tasted it. And so I'm going to take it and break it apart. And actually, might want to use a spatula for this part, but I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to put it in a glass container and then we can use it to snack on or for cereal or to put on top of yogurt or whatever we want. It definitely clumped together better this time around. I don't think it's gonna last very long because we'll be eating it. I'm putting some of this in a little mason jar to take to work because it's perfect for snacking on at work. I let some of my students try this last week and they loved it. So I might share some too. Okay, next we're going to make a dark chocolate peanut butter date bark. And let me tell you, you will not believe how good this is and how easy it is. So the first thing, I've just got a regular Pyrex glass container here and I'm just gonna put my parchment paper in it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take some dates. Now these dates are not pitted. I want to get yourself a little bowl for the pits and then I'm going to put them down into my parchment paper and just line them up. Once you've got the dates all lined up, what you want to do is you want to grab another sheet of parchment paper and just use your hands to smash them down. It should be pretty pliable if you've got nice fresh dates. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. And then for the next layer, I love this organic creamy peanut butter that I get at Costco because it's really great for drizzling. So I'm just gonna drizzle a layer of peanut butter right on top of the dates. I'm just gonna use a back of, the back of a spoon to cover them the best I can with the peanut butter layer. You can put as much peanut butter or as little as you like. 
Then I'm going to add my cons. You can add whatever kind of nuts you would like to this. And because I want to try it, I'm going to add some pumpkin seeds. I did not add pumpkin seeds last time, but I love pumpkin seeds. So I just kind of want to see how they do in this. I'm going to add some pumpkin seeds. This is what it looks like at this step. We've got the dates, the peanut butter layer, nuts and pumpkin seeds. And next what I'm gonna do, I've got these dark cacao chocolate chunks. I get these at Aldi. You saw my Aldi shopping video, I talked about these. And I'm just going to melt them in the microwave. You could do this in a double boiler or you can do it in the microwave. I'm gonna do it in the microwave. The important thing about the microwave is you do it for like 30 seconds and then you stir it and then 30 seconds and then you stir it because you don't want to burn the chocolate. This is the consistency that you want for your chocolate. So then I'm just going to take this chocolate and I'm going to pour it over the top of these nuts and seeds. Got a better tool, this spatula is gonna work better than that spoon did. So just make sure that you get this covered with the chocolate. So I've just got some flaky salt here that I'm gonna put on top. Cause I like that sweet and salty balance. All right, so the next thing is we're going to take this and we are going to cover it and put it in the freezer and check on it in about 45 minutes and see what it looks like. You can either cut this date bark or you can break it. I'm gonna break apart this date bark so you can check it out. Look at that. That is just deliciousness. I'm going to try it. I'm excited to see how the pumpkin seeds taste in here. Mm. You have to make this. The next thing that we are going to make is a frozen yogurt bark. And so when I was a kid, my absolute favorite type of yogurt was the lemon yogurt. But we know that if we buy flavored yogurt, it's got a ton of extra sugar in it, so we are going to make our own. So what I've got here is I've got just two cups of plain Greek yogurt, and I'm going to cut a lemon. I'm gonna add my own lemon to the yogurt. So I'm gonna start with a half a lemon and we'll see how that tastes in there. I feel like that's probably gonna be good. And because this is completely unsweetened, we also need to sweeten it. So I'm adding some maple syrup. We're gonna give it a taste, see how it is, and see if I need more. I'm gonna add in the maple syrup, like a tablespoon at a time till I get this, the uh, sweetness that I want for this. All right, just a little bit more maple syrup and I think we're in business. I've got another pan here, another sheet pan, and I've lined it with parchment paper. And I'm just going to take the lemon yogurt that I just made and put it onto the parchment paper and I'm gonna spread it out. I think that's pretty good. Then I've got some fresh blueberries here and so I'm just going to sprinkle those right on top. And I've got leftover pecan from when we made our date bark, our chocolate peanut butter date bark. So I'm just gonna sprinkle those on top as well because I don't wanna waste them. And I also think that this will be delicious. I think it's going to be pretty and it'll add just a little bit of additional sweetness. I've got some date syrup. So I'm just gonna kind of do some 
lines like this across. And there we go. All right, so that is our lemon blueberry pecan yogurt bark that, that I'm going to put into the freezer. This is probably going to take at least an hour and a half, if not two hours before it becomes the bark. But look how beautiful it is, isn't that pretty? And you can change this up in any kind of ways you want. I just really was kind of feeling some blueberry and lemon together. Yesterday I made one with bananas and peanut butter and that one was really good, but this one's going in the freezer. This is what our yogurt bark looks like when it has fully frozen and then you can just break it into pieces and it makes just a delicious snack. Just like that. It is really, really cold. So you may wanna just let it thaw just a little bit before you dig in. So I hope that this video has inspired you to get in the kitchen and try making some homemade snacks for your family. You'll be so very glad that you did.